recently been my challenge with cancer and it wasn't just a regular cancer it was a stage four advanced cancer to liver and lungs my diagnosis said with this kind of cancer it's usually very quick and there isn't a lot of time to prepare so it would be good to get your affairs in order I saw this beautiful little animal little bird just tweeting and I just stopped and admired the sound and it seemed, you know, you just think of these things. There's, there's so many gifts that we, we, we take for granted if we're not careful. Obviously, falling down a mountain, you technically are that close to being dead, where your life can be snuffed out very quickly. Welcome to the Sacred Conversation, and I am Daniela Haskara. Today I have an interview with Trevor Miller and his healing journey. And I'm so excited that you could join me. Welcome, thank you very much too. <laughs> I appreciate being invited to this uh, experience. Let me ask you, what has been on your journey the key aha moments of some of your experiences. When I was sick, trying to get down on the typewriter was the last thing I could really do, uh, except do little thank you videos on Facebook, that type of thing. Seeing you going through this, uh, this experience the entire time from the diagnostic experience, from, from, from getting the, the knowledge of how bad the cancer was because wasn't it declared to be like a four stage cancer well a four stage and it wasn't just yeah. four stage it was like it you was know even we worse really right much. We, we, we put you out to pasture yeah. we've done the best we can and, yeah, and yeah. unfortunately and you right. were you were given you were given like three four months right well they say traditionally for that kind yeah. of condition it's about three months yeah and um, it so could be three weeks or it could be six months, but you yeah. could every three months. So for all of this was a very a huge shock to you first. It was first a huge shock. But in the same time, you kept your belief. You, you never gave up and you never doubted your own healing capacities. And and mm. I I'm, I'm I'm trying to grasp of what this experience for you really was. You see what I'm saying? Because I have yeah. we we unfortunately just to, uh, recently lost um um a few beautiful friends in in our in our circle. Everyone, in one uh, space I mean, one year. Four, and my mother. Uh, so for me. Oh. Um, but but the four f deepest friends of ours in our age <laughs> um, is, is is so shocking, and 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 most of them been uh, going through this journey and and so fast. So I, you ahead of them with. Uh, with all this um with 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 maybe even a worst case mm -hmm. cancer experience there somehow you did not um give up there was no belief inside of you that that was an option i mean i I'm, I'm i'm trying to grasp your experience you know because i have seen you through it and I've noticed um, your positivity. Would you like to speak about the word? The word is the word is inshallah. Maybe I got that word wrong, but I was told it taught me it was a Muslim <laughs> word. It means by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, if God is willing, if God is willing, so God willing, that's what it means. So. Well, what, deep what trust. I yeah. deep, express deep your trust. deep trust. Deep yeah. this express your desire 
but at the end of the day mm -hmm. let the greater wisdom come through and sometimes the greater wisdom isn't what we think is what we want it's what is the greater wisdom and it's a matter of trusting that we are all connected to source at all times that nothing is separate from anything else and if you can feel that ultimately you go back to source and you are a piece of source experiencing itself it sounds like a lot of words i know but i was feeling that if i if i if i live which i want to do i'm choosing to do is because i've got a lot more i feel i got to do in this world a lot more loving and a lot more exploring and a lot more sharing and my my spiritual name is awareness message it was given to me by osho and it's always been i felt a, a truthful statement because that's how i've lived my life is wanting to create bring awareness through a message uh, hopefully a happy engaging message but it allows awareness to to come through as well and i feel that was my life's purpose and i didn't uh I didn't have to make up that name. It was given to me. And I realized, wow, what a perfect name that was given to me by a great master. So I, I feel, well, okay. I didn't That's even know name. that. I didn't know that. Tell me. Tell me oh. what's the name. <laughs> well. <laughs> if you want to keep it private, that's fine, too. I can. <laughs> it's um it's it's just simply a, a truthful statement. So I just wanted to um maintain that clarity to not be too infected by the emotion of what's happening but to feel the truth of what's going on and then to digest that and simplify it i find i'm very good i believe at getting a complex thought the set of ideas and bringing it down to its essence and then sharing that essence in a way that is digestible to people who maybe can't really appreciate what what that's all about And sometimes it helps people. And I was a teacher for a, a primary school teacher for 15, 14 years in the classroom. So I have had experience at getting ideas and trying to bring them to a set of steps that allows it to be accessible to other people who may find the concept difficult at first. It all kind of comes natural to me, really, I think. Um I was finishing a story which I felt was very profound. Yeah, so to get through the cancer, it was acknowledging the, the experience I had in my life, bringing it to a point of practical application, saying I trust in God knows what is good for me, but I I'm expressing what my preference is, but trusting in the this the sacred dance will will take me where it needs to go so it's like having a little bit of input i see it a bit like a piece of flotsam going down the river of life you can kind of go left or you can go right and you can steer from hitting yourself in a log or hitting a, a rock but at the end of the day maybe a canoe going down a white water rapids is a better example you've got a, a sort of a control of the mechanism but at the end of the day god's going to take you where god's going to take you And you trust that where God's going to take you is back to source and you're here on the ride of life to get the maximum experience of what your soul signed up to even get in that canoe in the first place. You, you knew you were not signing up for an adventure. And if you weren't going to sign up for that particular adventure, then you probably weren't going to be in that particular canoe. You would have probably taken a different route, a different river, a different canoe. But here you are in your canoe and you say, OK, God, I'm in the canoe. You've given me cancer. I've got stage four. Woohoo! How are we going to handle this one? And and then the magic happened. The GoFundMe miraculously appeared and money was coming in. And I was able to buy different experimental, not, not weird stuff from the doctor, but, you know, really healthy vitamins and supplements and things that got um, good cell cancer fighting um, powers that were told to me by various um, naturopaths and That natural healers and people I trusted. One of the people, I have to give him a credit, two people. But um, I'll, I'll, I'll leave people's names out because everyone likes their privacy. But I was given a tip. 
and uh, they told me at different times. And when when it's the penny finally dropped at all, oh, I've heard that that mentioned to me. Maybe I need to have a look at it. It became a, one of my wonderful treatments. Which most people turn up the nose and go, oh, what the hell is that? But it it worked for me and it's still working and it's very accessible. And all I can say is um if you if that's not working and you got nothing else to turn to, talk to Trevor because I've got a few tips for you for how I turned it around. <laughs> yeah. Your success story so proves that you did something what you 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 are still with us and you know and 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 i just want to say this this is for me an incredible gift that you're still with us so i'm a living example of someone who had to get out outside the box not because i didn't want to trust the box i gave the box my full trust and when it backfired i figured well i'm out being sent out the pasture now no treatments at all just try and Get work it out for yourself, son. Would you like hospice? We can line you up with hospice. No, I think I'm not ready right. for that. I'm ready to. In, in a way, it's like a tiger or a lion. It's chased down the canyon and it's running away from the hunter. And then it comes to the to the end of the canyon. It's a box canyon. It's got a big stone wall, 300 feet high, mm -hmm. and it thinks, okay, I can't climb that wall. And I got that hunter with the big gun. And then all of a sudden, the lion turns around and it has this amazing amount of courage and it, it'll probably attack six hunters with guns and maybe even have a chance of winning. Not because it wants to, it would rather escape. But when you're facing the insurmountable hurdles of cancer hunting you down, you either get scared and do what the good doctor told you or you say, OK, doc, it didn't work. I'm not taking any more. I'm going to have to work it out for myself. And this is what I'm going to try now. And you do it. And inshallah. By the grace of God, if what God wants me to make it through, so be it. I'm not saying I've made it through, but so far it's looking okay, and I'm feeling. I you need twelve hours sleep a day. I'm not. I'm not a. I'm not a, a guy who's back to the no. way you remember me. But I've put on some weight. I hit 137 pounds, which is for a bloke who was about 200 pounds. That was kind of a pretty thin version of myself. I was basically bone skin and that was about it in the head on my shoulders but then i'm up to 164 pounds now which is not not really it's probably getting close to halfway between the worst and the best so if i just keep moving in the right direction that's a good sign right yeah well you have your your humor and you have your positivity and i i have great faith in you the and also there was this time period And you learned a lot about the right um, food and um, preparation of food. And and do you like to speak to us about that? I would say it's highly recommended. Basically pure organic juices, uh, not juices, but fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm and some, some juices in moderation i mean that is a very uh, healthy organic diet that any, everyone in the cancer world who's healing naturally knows you thought it because she was 90 she built the hospital the reason why i give that a good mention is when I went in, I was pretty much a head on a stick. I came out a head on a stick, but I had a lot of information and I was really cleansed of you know, toxins. I did all kinds of super duper IV vitamin C treatments. They changed my blood through an ozone machine. Um, they, they gave you super oxygen in a deep diving chamber where you go down to two and a half atmospheres, which is like underwater 70 feet, and they you breathe in pure oxygen. And you're doing this daily, and they're they're totally on on the on it. They don't release you for three weeks, and when you come out, you feel like you've been through a lot of stuff. Yeah. And they give you a box of things to take home, which is all your your after treatments. And then you do those after treatments for a solid six months, where you report to a doctor every few weeks, and they look at your blood test. You do a blood test back home, and then they look at that and give you their impression of what's going on. And the good thing is I took my my um, 
all my medical results down and they were they they I sent them in a package they analyzed them so they had a whole program ready for me when I arrived based on my particular um previous history so they were, they're all doctors they're all nurses they're all highly trained the only difference is the doctors are on a fraction of the pay they could normally earn in the states some some of them are american doctors they just drive across the border from san diego because it's just 20 minutes into mexico at tijuana right on the beach not right right on the beach but you can see the beach from the, the floors and uh I say it really, it was great because what happened was from a person who had the cancer doubling in size before I went there, double, it went from 50% to 100% bigger. The tumors had all doubled in size after this botch to the treatment. They analyzed it and they said, okay, we're going to uh, do this and that. And when I got back, I got a, an immediate 50% reduction in my first PET scan. My doctor was like, oh, wow. So Trevor, yeah, I mean, what an amazing um, possibility to have alternatives. And that's what you've been talking about. It is that you were not just taking recommendations from common medicine and, and everything. You took a, a very close look to all the available treatments and you chose very carefully and you were not hesitating taking on a road less traveled in the common traditional sense of cancer treatments. And I uh, am I correct that, that you also were not comp not really going that with uh, with chemotherapy? Was there was there like a small chemo? Uh, um, experiment oh, yeah my doctor who had um botched up on my original treatment after 10 months i was able through natural methods of which i can share that if you're interested but i, I was able to heal my intestine myself privately oh. and he said don't come back to the hospital really for treatment until you get your intestine because at the moment they had to keep me on steroids which are they have a lot of side effects and i was very lucky to dodge the bullet the one why, I was why taking, steroids? Um, why why well, the steroids? The steroid, the, what happened was, in a in a nutshell, is the immunotherapy over makes the immune system over get strong, and it's trying to hunt down the cancer cells and kill them. But sometimes the the immunotherapy make, makes the good killer cells in the body go rogue, and it starts attacking the internal organs, and that's what happened. They had these out of control immune system attacking my own body oh. and that's not what they wanted so the only way they could cool down the nuclear reaction so to speak in my body was to give me it's called steroids and i'm trying to remember the big one the horrible one that everyone complains about it's called um prednisone now one of the side effects of prednisone which is a very powerful steroid is it makes your face go round oh. you become like moon face and they said that's an unfortunate side effect, but it's worth it to try and save your life because we've got to cool down the nuclear reaction. It's like dropping in the uh, the graphite rods in a nuclear reaction that's out of control. It calms down the reaction. Well, so I was taking the prednisone while I was trying to heal my damaged digestive system, which I did through methods. Um, one of them is drinking a certain very powerful olive oil that has a I think it has a high ole, oleic, oleic. There's a certain number in olive oil that has a certain, which is the really good stuff. And the highest number one of that I was drinking, had to wake up at 3 a.m. 3 every night, gulp it down a couple of ounces because your body had to have a completely empty stomach in order to do it. But it worked. Did it from 10 months, healed my internal digestion. And uh, the doctor was uh, thinking maybe he'd done it, but I couldn't really tell him what I was doing because I noticed as soon as I mentioned that I'm doing anything alternative separate to them, they get a little peeved. They won't admit yeah. to it, but you can kind of see the shutters go up and it's almost like, oh, so you're not following doctor's instructions? Well, I'm not sure we can really help you that much anymore, right, right, sir. Because right. 
Yeah. So you know, we've got it, protocols we have to follow here at the hospital. Yeah. That's how the hospital functions. Yeah, and so and, I, I and it's to... a it's a very tricky road. It's a very tricky road because you you totally want to believe the doctors. You also know that they're doing the best they can. They trying to help you and they're having their protocols. Um and also they are having their requirements given to them to exactly if they don't follow the protocols that they have to follow it's not like they can just quietly look exactly get this exactly stuff. take vitamin c don't they? <laughs> they can't do that they can't mention yeah, exactly. I get a exactly. for IV exactly. vitamin c which is acknowledged as a very powerful healing healer for people with cancer anyway cut to the chase so I had a 50% improvement all round and that bought, and then I got a further 30% improvement and, and they combine complementary. They do. better efficacy than the previous trip <laughs> they won't really admit their errors i just which is kind of thinking positive i guess so i i asked okay would you analyze this and they said they said i had a board meeting they had all the doctors around the table and they looked at all the reports they said you know we've come to the conclusion at the boards that this will be okay to take with your with your complementary treatment we're giving you here so i got the green light from them so i started taking my chemo in conjunction my regular doctor in America, who's now there's now an Australian equivalent, mm. they're recommending I take this particular type of oral chemo, which I'm doing, and I got the green light of approval that this chemo will be complementary, and it'll do some of the job that the complementary medicine isn't able to do properly, mm. and they can work together as a tag team. Yeah. Being the best of the straight world, and the best of the alternative world. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a it must be um, a different treatment to what a lot of people get who lose their hair. I'd be happy to list it. I would say anyone would not be able to get access without a prescription, but at least they can get a ballpark of what they can ask their doctor if that might work. Exactly. It could even be higher now with inflation. Right. right. And the reason why I mentioned that was most people don't go until they've tried everything else because health insurance doesn't cover. Right. So right. most people who've got in health insurance of some sort try and go through that route. But the problem with that route is you're dealing with, with the traditional chemo like that immunotherapy, you know. Mm -hmm. So You've got to decide how far you want to go with the regular treatment before you say, hell, nothing's working. I'm, I'm killing myself. I've got, to, I've got to fork out the money, which I don't have. And that's how the GoFundMe saved my life. It's only the beginning mm -hmm. because I got a 50% reduction, 30% reduction, and then no change. And then on the next, pet, every three months, I have another PET scan. So a year down, the cancer was growing back again slowly. So I put out the SOS to my friend saying, help, help. Who's got some suggestions? I don't think I've got the heavy lift power to get my friends to fork out another $40,000. What do I do now? There's got to be another answer. And then that's when I decided to. Now, some people who hear this, message might think oh i'll say i think the way it works is you do what's obviously trustable like the man in the white coat right with the credentials a mile long and then if that if that fails then you do whatever their second option is and if that fails you think okay i'm getting desperate now i've got to try and work out for myself what i can do that will heal myself now some of us who don't have health insurance we can't even afford the man with the white coat so if that's the case
because it's far more detailed than what I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. Here, let, let's just say it this way. We options are there when you deeply look at how other people were able to explore success with those methods. And we want to, all we're doing here is um, telling a story of um, what experiments worked <laughs> and uh, mm. what maybe has not worked as well. And, um, you know, in the middle of all that, we unfortunately lost a few really beautiful friends in our friend circle who did different protocols and they didn't work. In, in all of those experiences and in life and your, you know, story about going down the canoe on the river, and you taking it on as a challenge, but you're not necessarily you you're just saying, okay, this is now this is now my my canoe. My canoe has now the cancer in it too, and 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 I go, okay, yeah, let's see where this adventure takes me. You you have to have a certain outlook who doesn't bend you in crushing you and letting the belief of this is the end into your system. I mean, one part of it is the medicine. And another part of it is your divine timing combined with your belief system. So, First of all, I think where it comes down to is also you if, you, if you're coming from a place inside of yourself where you know ultimately that even if you die, even if you're leaving this planet, you're, you, 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 you know, it's still continuous, something still bigger and greater continues. And that, that alone, it takes a, a certain number of fear away, right? But if you combine this with the your humbleness, what you were speaking about, you are humbling to a place where within you, God, by your grace, you keep me alive, and by your grace, you let me die. You you have you you're surrendering to a bigger plan and allowing that to take place but with with utterly trust that the guidance will show up what you need and and i loved your analogy how you you couldn't sort through all the emails or your you know and 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 there are these obstacles in the way how you can even find this truth i mean we we all truth seekers, right? So so what is it? What is it? Where am I going? What is the best for me? What is the best for me? Please, God, guide me. And then it comes down to oh, sh something shows up, and ah, I see the sign <laughs> written on the wall. Uh, you know, so I I I really have a sense here with your experience that your inner viewing of the truth and the guidance combined mm. with the messages you're receiving forming your path and your steps forward mm.